Hello and welcome to the Teenager Sunday School class. Welcome to the mo a new and beautiful month. And we are so blessed that God has given us the privilege to see a brand new month. This month is a month of grace. And this is the Teenager's Sunday School class. I am your host, Demitokwe David. And I would like to encourage you to follow and subscribe as you do so. God bless you real good. Amen. If you are just joining this stream, this is how we do. Yeah. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. And as you have joined us today, I believe that the Lord, the word is going to, the Lord is going to give you understanding even as we go through this class in Jesus name. Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come even into our midst and give us understanding. Amen. Today, our, te our topic is time is short. Time is short. Time is short. And our text is going to be taken from the book of Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. However, our memory verse is taken from the book of Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 1. And it says, to everything... To every single thing, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Our relevant word today is timing, simple and short timing. We have two outlines, so pretty much straightforward. And I know that the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you in Jesus name. The first one is divine timing in life divine timing in life. And the second one is using your time wisely, using your time wisely. Time is a space or measure that has been given to every man within which he must accomplish certain things in life. You must understand that no matter how long a person desires to live on earth, it is very short. You must therefore do all that is in your power to take advantage of time allotted to you to fulfill all that God sent you into this world to accomplish. Today's study is to help you as teenagers, help us all as Christians to understand the value of time and as well to use it to the glory of God. I'll be reading from the New King James Version today and from our text, Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. Very nice, short and simple. And I know you get it when, when we read it. And he says, so everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to get together stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the workers from that? What profit has the workers from that in which he labors? I have seen the God given task with which the son of men are to be pre preoccupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time also, he has put enmity, he has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to, to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word, the hearing and the doing in Jesus name. Divine timing in life. What is divine timing in life? 
There is a divine timing for everything. The scripture describes God as the one who has time and seasons in his hand, in his hands and makes everything work at his appointed time, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Jesus spoke about the time um, appointed to him to operate. If you look at John chapter 2 verse 4, Jesus, when, when Jesus will come the second time, it is a secret that God has kept in his heart and set for a particular time. You can look at Mark chapter 13, verse 32 to 33. Everything that God does is timed. For instance, the Holy Spirit did not descend on the disciples until the day of Pentecost was fully come. Check that out in Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Understanding the concept of divine timing will revolutionize your life and deliver you for, from being unnecessarily agitated about events in your life. When God made you at the beginning, it was a wonderfully and fearfully perfected job. And all the days of your, of, of your appointed years have been spelt out in details in his book. And you can look at Psalms chapter 139, verse, 9, verse 12 to 18. So whatever stage you're in in life, the most important prayer must never to fail God. The most important prayer will be to that, that you need to pray is to pray that you do not fail God. You must never pray. You must never fail to pray that God should give you an insight into what time or season that is in that that, that you're currently in. This will actually save you from, from being under undue pressure. All the promises of God for his children are backed by his eternal covenants and they will come to pass, but at varying times in our lives. Amen. So the second outline is using your time wisely, using your time wisely. One important lesson you must learn is how to make most of your time and season, making most of your time and the seasons in your life or the seasons that you, you are in your life. Every time and season has inherent lesson of life and opportunities. If we wisely or if, if we wisely unnest and make most of finding out, you would be able to fulfill God's agenda in your life. Your life will be one. Your life will be will be a fulfilling one. Otherwise, depending on how well and wisely you are able to use your time, you might actually not. It might it might not actually work out correctly. So the question would be, how do you use your time wisely and take advantage of your season? One of the first ways you can do so is have a sense of purpose. Have a sense of purpose. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. You cannot just jump in and out of anything. And reading this, it says that we should see that we work, you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand the will, what the will of the Lord is. So you can't just, you can't just be on cruise mood. You have to understand, you have to have a sense of purpose. What has God called me to do? What area should I develop myself? What are the things that I need to do now that would sort of impact my future tomorrow? So those are the sort of questions you want to ask yourself now. Another question, another thing is you have to constantly remind yourself of the brevity of time and opportunities. And the, 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 the reference to that is Ephesians chapter five, verse 16. We've just read that. 
Again, you need to cut off unnecessarily unnecessary involvement and unprofitable association. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 and for Proverbs chapter 3 13 verse 20 says, He who walks with wise men be, will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroying. You need to cut off unnecessary involvement and unprofitable association. So it's important to check where you are currently, check what you're currently doing, check the activities that you're engaging in. Is it profiting you? Is it working according to the purpose of God for your life? Are you building? You know, again, it can be a little bit difficult because when you've gone far, far in, in your own plan and it can be difficult to turn back, but it is always worth it to realize that when that it is always worth it when you realize that your life is not particularly aligned to the purpose of God for your life. And the quicker you realize that, the quicker you start taking steps, turning back, making things right, the quicker you'll be able to get to your destination on time according to the plan and purpose for your for your life. So the next thing is to surround yourself with purposeful, driven friend, purpose driven driven friend. You can't have everybody cannot be your friend. That is the truth. In this life, everyone cannot be your friend. Even as you're growing up, you'll be able to understand that there are certain things you do not like in a person or with a person. Everybody cannot be um, your friend. You have to choose wisely. You have to choose correctly that the friends that are surrounding you are either helping you to fulfill your purpose in Christ, encouraging you and building you up not tearing you down. So you can't have time for gossips. You can't have time for certain activities that doesn't glorify God. And in conclusion and summary of our lesson is that you do not have all the time to stay here on earth. We know that nobody knows tomorrow. Some of us, by the grace of God, would, you know, attain old age. And, you know, we've seen situations whereby people do not really get there. However, whatever short time we have, it is important that we complete the assignment God has given, given us. You have, you have a God given assignment that needs to be fulfilled. Therefore, each day of your life has to be assigned for specific assignment. You must therefore work and walk in the consciousness of the real, the, the reality of the shortness of time. Do all you need to do when you need to do them according to time and purpose. And the application of our lesson is time is life. God has set seasons and time in place for you to operate and achieve all he sent you here to achieve. Everyone who wastes time wastes life. Don't, I repeat, don't waste your time invest in it. Before we round up this session, we have questions as we usually do. So the first question is, time is short. So what should be your attitude to time? Discuss. Time is short. What should be your attitude to, to, to time? Listen, God demonstrates his sovereignty through time. Since each minute of our existence is determined by a specific goal established by his power power to make the most of your time you need to grasp and understand the season the current season of your life it can seasons could mean okay ah how old am i now what am i supposed to be doing i'm in secondary school for instance what am i supposed to be doing in secondary school what are the things that i'm supposed to be to be learning in secondary school understand where you are and if you're an adult listen to me listening to me today, you want to check your, your season. Am I in the harvest season or you want to check, am I in the dry season so that you can adjust to the things that God is calling you into. There are elements of this, of, of the season that people, you know, love. We understand that everybody loves everything to be going smoothly. But there are also parts of the season that people dislike. You might not like where you are currently. Before you can effectively manage your time, you must balance out various mindsets in your past. 
Some of us have gone through certain stages of, 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 of life. We have been hurt in the process. We have been, you know, we have been discriminated against in the process. We have been called or sort of name in the process of time. Yeah. But we have to develop various mind mindset for the past, present and future stages of our life for your early recognition that whatever happens in the past belongs in the past. You have to forgive yourself, learn the lesson that needs to be learned and move on. Some people have, you know, some people have gone through betrayals. Some have gone through rejection. Some is go, some are currently going through it, but you need to learn in this process in time. You need to learn your current stage and address it. And if it's happened in the past, do not let it affect what is currently happen, happening now. If somebody has called you a failure, you might look at the scripture and say, listen, that is not what God has called me. Yes, God has called me. To, to, he has told me that I am the head and not the tail. God has not called me to failure. I have a father who never fails. Therefore, as the offspring of Christ, I will not fail. I am not a failure. Some people might have rejected you. Some people might have called you names or, you know, betray you. I want to encourage you for you. I want to encourage you to let go of the past. Think, learn your lesson is important so that you don't repeat the, 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 the circle again. Yeah. But learn everything you need to learn now. Have a resolute mind. Forgive. And everything that belongs to the past should remain there. If God has forgiven you, then you need to forgive yourself. Check that everything you are doing is, in, is proper and in line with the purpose of God for your life. And for your future, you need to start preparing for your future now as you are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Indeed, there is a time for everything. And there is a season for everything under the sun. Our seasons will be undoubtedly be uh, mixed with bags of blessings and difficulties. But our attitude must remain the same no matter what stage we're in. Maintaining a positive outlook on faith is the key to having the appropriate attitude to manage our time. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The second one is how can you wisely use your time? How can you wisely use your time? First, you need to set sensible goals and objective. Be realistic. Set it. Set goals. I am going to talk to, I am going to read the scripture every day. I am going to learn what God is telling me, how God has called me. I am going to pray about certain things every day. I am going to, you know, Go take a class, learn a new skill. I'm going to develop myself. Set attainable and measurable goals and objectives. That is very important. You can't set big goals and then expect it to happen. You have to set measurable goals, tasks to achieve those big goals. Set sensible priorities, what is most important. Sort tasks according to the priority and urgency. Another thing you need to do is set a deadline for finishing the task. And it's important to take a break in between your projects. And you also need to get yourself together. Get your mindset right. Get your mindset right. Eliminate all unnecessary tasks and activity. Learn to say no to certain things. When your friend is calling you to go somewhere and you need to finish what you need to complete, you need to learn to say no. And again, lastly, you need to think ahead, think ahead, think ahead, be futuristic in your timing um, practices. So we have um, take-home assignments. The take-home assignment is simple, but it's all depending on you. And it's, you need to examine the usage of your time. Would you say you have demonstrated wisdom in the way you use your time? If no, determine to recognize 
and reorganize yourself and manage your time properly. We have now come to the end of this class. By the grace of God, I am grateful to God that this class has blessed you undoubtedly. I'd like you to share this, this video. I'd like you to sow it as a seed into the heart of somebody and I know it's going to bless them. And when you do so, that is your own quarter of evangelism. So we have now come to the end of this class. And um, I just want to declare over you that this month is going to be a great month. And I want to give you the opportunity to come to Christ. Because all of this, maximizing our time here on earth, can only be done with the help of God. And accepting Christ as our Lord and personal Savior to be able to push us and empower us and release grace to be to be able to do the will of the Father. And if perhaps you do not know this Christ that we're talking about today, I'd like you to and 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 you want to encourage you, you want to encourage, you know, you, I, I'd like to encourage you to surrender yourself, to surrender your heart to him so that it can help you process and help you and give you a blueprint of your life. When you know these things, it's easy to manage your time. It's easy to fulfill your destiny in Christ. And if you want to do so now, I'd like to ask you to say this quick word of prayer with me. Just say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the message I've heard today. Thank you because in you, there is so much time and I thank you for the opportunity to be able to turn back and realize that I need to fulfill my purpose on earth. Would you please forgive all my sins? Would you please, Jesus, wash away all my unrighteousness in the name of Jesus? And would you please, Father, give me your spirit so that your spirit will guide me, your spirit will lead me, your spirit will help me. Today I forsake my, uh, my sin and I ask that you empower me to chase after you and do your will and your bidding now and forevermore. Amen. If you have said that quick word of prayer, please send me a DM. I'd like to communicate with you. And as well, I'd like you to encourage, I'd like to encourage you to join a Bible believing church near you. The pandemic is over. Okay. So it's important to you join a Bible-believing church so that you can grow in faith as well. And as you do so, God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Demitoka David, and by the grace of God, we'll be seeing you sometime again next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and God bless you. Take care. Bye.